Today I'm going to be exploring the relationship between mouse and my own relationship with my father. So we're going to look at father-son dynamics, which is obviously a huge part of the story with Vladek and Art and that whole dynamic of understanding his father's journey and how they relate to each other. I'm Adam Crossley. <laughs> Welcome. Uh, so, uh, first similarity between the two fathers, where both fathers were very good at building and fixing things. So here we've got the model of the bunker where they're hid away from the Nazis, the, the Jews, the Vladek was hiding um, amongst, with, and uh, you can see that he's has a very clear vision because he helped construct it and pretty ingenious constructor shun has got the it's bolted to the floor so you wouldn't think that that's really the door to it right there and this is uh, an outer wall that's made of bricks um, so you wouldn't think to look behind a brick wall there's people behind the brick wall with coal stacked up against it so it looks like there's just all filled with coal in here but actually people are living in there he built that whole thing Pretty impressive. Uh, and he's also able to recall all the details, and he actually takes the pen from Art and says, here, let me draw it for you so I can show you exactly how it is so you get this right. And you can see here, this is my dad, and he's in the backyard building the house that uh, I grew up in, that my mom still lives in. He built the whole house. Uh, he's got the pencil in his mouth. You can tell he's not, he not just built it, he designed the whole thing. Uh, pretty impressive. Very good with his hands. Uh, so, in this slide, you can see Vladek's incredible ability to think through and solve problems. And this shows not only his technical ability, but his ability to plan and like think intelligently. He's not just a builder, he's a planner. He's able to work with his hands to complete his plan. And that uh, skill is a huge part of what takes him through the trials of the Holocaust. Uh, and my dad really shared this skill. He didn't have to survive a terrible ordeal like the Holocaust, but he, uh, he was able to take it and make it work for them. Um, he was able to basically, my parents were able to buy their first house, rebuild the whole thing, sell it, buy the house next door and buy their current house, rebuild them both up and they were set basically for, you know, that set them out financially. Uh, very admirable. Um, they were both very resourceful in ability to plan, in their ability to plan, and I admire that about my dad, dad. The same way you can tell in this slide that, like, he might not say it much, but Art's impressed by his father. You can see the way he's just sort of looking like, mm, wow, you know, and you, you can, it's communicated by the drawings on this page that he's impressed by his ability to build. And there's a picture of my dad and my mom in the house, who is still just being constructed the frames um, and yeah, doing all that himself. Stuff that I would have no idea where to start. And these are some panels from Alice. Aisha, could you read the first one? Uh-huh. He wants me to go help him fix his roof or something. Shit. Even as a kid, I hated helping him around the house. Robin? He loved showing off how handy he was and proving that anything I did was all wrong. He made me completely neurotic about the deceit stuff. Spencer? I mean, I didn't even own a hammer before we moved into this place. One reason I became an artist was that he thought it was impractical, just a waste of time. Andrea? It was an area where I wouldn't have to compete with him. So are you going out to Queens? Um, we'll keep going one more slide. Uh, Aisha? No way. I rather feel guilty. Besides, I'm too busy and he can easily afford to hire somebody. Uh, hello, Pop? Listen, about that drain pipe. I don't think I can come. I... So, never mind, Artie. I talked just now to Frank, what lives next door. He agreed he would fix with me over the weekend. That's great. Yes, of course. Better it will be fixed today, but at least somebody will help me. Just great. Just great. Okay. So uh, and here's my dad fixing a shower, tearing out the shower and remaking the things in the bathroom. Stuff that I have no idea how to do. Um, so yeah, this sort of analysis of the ability 
and effects on son's self-image. So like, how do, the, how do you feel as being the son of somebody who has all of this physical ability? Um, so you can see Art's reaction to Vladek, uh, well, son is impressed, he's also intimidated. Um, and feels a bit inadequate, as shown here. When, when we moved to this place, I didn't even own a hammer, right? It's like, I didn't want to fix anything. I was worried that I was going to be a failure at everything that I tried because he did such a good job at it. Um, and that's where he says one reason uh, I became an artist. He thought it was just impractical. Well, I'm pretty terrible fixing things. If something's broken, uh, I tend to just break it more or install stuff incorrectly. Uh, it's always a big struggle for me, but I can play the guitar. <laughs> so I can really relate to uh, Art's sentiment there. Um, and yeah, Art doesn't want to compete because he knows he'll never be as good. His father's at that high level. And to me, this story is really, it's a sub-story to the Holocaust, right? It's not, it's not really about the Holocaust anymore, it's about the father-son relationship. But it's those character dynamics that make the story come alive that make Mouse much more than just a Holocaust story and make it really memorable and a unique perspective. Uh, so, and my dad was also very, very good at fixing cars and I just remember that he would try to sometimes teach me, not very often, but sometimes he would try to teach me how to fix the car and, uh, you know, I would be turning something the wrong way and strip out a screw or break some tube or something uh, I just always remember, God damn it, Adam, let me do it. <laughs> just, just, I could hear his voice so clearly and just kind of pushed me out of the way. He was, he, he, and uh, you know, it wasn't out of meanness or lack of intention, but uh, to be fair to him, I was not instinctively very good at that. You know, some people have a nice natural knack and they really want to fix things. And I was more like art, like, can't you just call somebody to fix this? And uh, I think that frustrated him and he didn't have the patience to really work through, and I didn't have the patience to work through, so I'm a healthy part of the blame there. Um, but it, this whole dynamic enables me to really relate to Art and Vladek's relationship, and as the reader, it allows me to connect into this story at a whole different level. Uh, I haven't survived the Holocaust, my father didn't survive the Holocaust, but I'm still a human, and that human story brings me into this story more. Uh, so here's a session with the psychiatrist, uh, Aisha. Some, somehow my arguments with my father have lost a little of their urgency. And Aus Auschwitz just seems too scary to think about, so I just lie there. It sounds like you're feeling remorse. Maybe you believe you exploded your father to ridiculous. Exposed your father to ridicule. Oh, oh ridicule. <laughs> Maybe I tried to be fair and still show how angry I felt. Even so, every boy when he's little looks up to his father. That sounds true, but it's hard for me to remember. Maybe I remember arguing with him and being told that I couldn't do anything as well as he could. And now that you are, now that you are becoming successful, you feel bad about proving, oh, sorry, proving your father wrong. Mm -hmm. So there's several things to notice on this slide. No matter what I accomplish, it doesn't seem like much compared to surviving Auschwitz. But you weren't in Auschwitz. You were in Rigo Park. Right? And there's my dad working on more stuff, tearing down brick walls and building up stuff. This is, some of these have, these have a timer on them, I think. Uh, so uh, my house, my current house, looks so different from this because he just rebuilt the whole front yard and the whole thing, just dug it all up with his hands. And uh, I wanted to do a little bit of comparison of guilt. If you look at the earlier slide, you notice that Art is a little boy in a mouse mask here, even though he's a grown man, he's a little boy. Uh, he doesn't call attention to that at all in the actual text. It's just a drawing detail to convey to readers how he feels infantile, how he feels hopeless, um, and really like childlike, and unable to control his emotions, almost like a, a pouting baby or an you know, infant that is acting very immature. Uh, that's why he conveys himself as this little small child. 
um, he's still angry. And you can see how angry he is in the little, the way he's in the shadow here, and you can see the anger um, in his eyes. He's still angry when he thinks about these arguments with his father. And uh, so uh, there's that theme of like guilt about, there's two levels of guilt here. There's first some guilt about how he's portrayed his father. Like, look, I've made my father out to be like this kind of hard person to deal with. And he's, but he's really great, you know? But I feel guilty about making him out to be so difficult. And uh, then there's also the theme here of, in comparison to what he's done, look at what I've done. And I feel that way about my own father when I was telling you guys about the houses. Like, he rebuilt two houses by the time he was my age. By the time he was my age, he had already finished like working on his second house, and he did it all like after work. You know, he had a normal job too. For me, I'm kind of like, well, I mean, I've made some albums, like, but it doesn't. There's there's something a little bit less tangible about it, so I can feel a little bit guilty, like I haven't accomplished as much as he was able to. Um, and also, this just even this presentation is sort of like a sensitive thing for me, talking about my relationship with my dad, and I look up to my dad a lot. But I realize this presentation comes across as me criticizing him a little bit, so I can really relate to Art's kind of guilt too, where you, you want it to be real, but it's hard to be real without criticizing people. Uh, so, one more, Esha. You're late. No, I'm not. I said I'd be by after dinner. But now it's dark out. I wanted you would climb to the roof. It's a leak in the drain pipe, huh? But I'm no good at fixing that kind of stuff. Why don't you hire somebody? Ugh. You and Mara, you both think money grows on bushes. I'll fix it myself. That's crazy. You can't climb a two-story ladder in your condition. Mm -hmm. And there's my dad uh, fixing up a, a, a door, a sliding door. Um, this reminded me of him being old and kind of becoming dependent upon art and wanting art to fix things. And this happened later in my dad's life too. Um, so uh, Vladek getting frustrated with his own declining ability and he wants to have art help, but it's frustrating for both of them because art's not any good at this. Um, and there's that source of tension. So that develops further those themes of guilt and inadequacy, right? If art feels guilty about it, Vladek feels angry about it because he can't quite deliver what his father wants. And I have a very clear memory, in the last year of my father's life, he had a stroke. You guys know a stroke is like a blood, like a burst blood vessel in your brain, basically, or a blood clot in your brain. And it messes with your um, function. Some people lose movement on one side of their body. Well, he was in the visual part of his brain, and for some reason he lost all the ability to like see small details. He couldn't see, he couldn't read. Um, it wasn't like a glasses problem, it was like an in his brain issue. And because of that, he couldn't fix things anymore, because he couldn't really look at them. And uh, there were these, we were staying at a place at the beach, and there were these vertical blinds, and they'd gotten all tangled up, and he really wanted to take them down and fix them. And he like knew there was this part where you had to like clip inside and push something and like pop it out. And he was like, I was trying to help him with it. He's like, just push the screwdriver in there, and there's a little ledge, and you have to push it up over that ledge and pull back on it. And I was like, we were trying to do it for like, 30 minutes and he's like, oh, he's like, it's so easy, just push it in there the right way. He's like, Gar! he was so angry in his eyes and he was also like, he wasn't that mad at me, but he, you could see how much the situation frustrated him. Uh, so I was really able to relate to um, our Vladek and kind of him declining in his life and then my own father and that element of their relationship as well was very personally relevant to me. And uh, to me that finalize with this slide, which we've talked about before, but let's just read it out one more time, Aisha. But, but this, what I just told you about. Lucia. Lucia, and so, I don't like what you should write this in your book. What? Why not? It was nothing to do with Hitler, with the Holocaust. But, Pop, it's great material. It makes everything more real, more human. I want to tell your story the way it really happened. So this connects to uh, this whole idea of this is obviously about Lucia and, not, and about the Holocaust. It's not about the relationship between Vladek and art, but Vladek and art is part of that real, realness. 
He's making his story real by including these themes that other people can relate to. And he does it even here with the black and white background in the panels showing kind of black. This story's about the Holocaust, it's black and white. And then down here when he's conveying the real world, it's shades of gray. And those shades of gray uh, connect and make this story more meaningful for me as a reader. So, uh, uh, to finish up, um, I want to read the poem Follower by Sivas Heaney, which is a which is a poem that deals with very similar themes and ideas, and maybe have a brief discussion, depending on how my time is. How much time have I used? Uh, you used 15. Ah, I'm at 15 already. Okay, then we're just going to read quickly, and I'm going to leave it with you to think about how this connects to my presentation, okay? My father worked with a horse plow. His shoulders glowed like a full str sail strung. Between the shafts and the furrow, the horses strained at his clicking tongue. An expert, he would set the wing and fit the bright steel pointed sock. The sod rolled over without breaking at the headroom with a single pluck. Of the reins, the sweating team turned round and back into the land. His eye narrowed and angled at the ground, mapping the furrow exactly. So he's a farmer and he's very good at it. I stumbled in his hobnailed wake. Hobnails kind of shoe, so I was a little boy trying to follow him. Fell sometimes on the polished sod. Polished sod, polished dirt, interesting oxymoron. So his father's polishing the dirt, the boy's just stumbling to keep up. Sometimes he rode me on his back, dipping and rising to his plod. I wanted to grow up and plow, to close one eye, stiffen my arm. All I ever did was follow in his broad shadow round the farm. I was a nuisance, tripping falling, yapping, always. But today it is my father who keeps stumbling behind me and will not go away. Cycle, the cycle. So uh, the cycle is uh, not the main part of Mouse, I would say, but an important part. And for me, it allowed the story to resonate more deeply and um, leave a more lasting impression. Thank you.